We are here to do the spoiler review for Guardians of the Galaxy with my guest stars, Adam Haskell from his Adam Haskell Vlogs channel, Brian Mendoza from his Brian Mendoza channel, and Jacob from his J53518 channel. If you want to check out our movie reviews, you can check out my movie review on my channel, J5's movie review on his channel, um, Adam did one on his Adam Haskell Vlogs along with Boyhood. And um, Brian, do you have any movie review for your channel, or? I haven't been taking a break on YouTube now. I'm still gonna watch your guys' videos, of course. I think he uh he wrote a review on Facebook. Yeah. I okay did. then. Let's go ahead and start off this spoiler review by talking about the opening scene. So the movie opened with Peter Quill as a little boy. He's in the hospital and his mother's dying, but. He gave her a present, which was obviously that 80s mixtape. So hearing from everyone, starting with Adam, how did you feel about the opening scene of Guardians of the Galaxy? Very, very sad, but I thought it was a really great opening, honestly. When the movie started, I was expecting the Marvel logo to show up, right? And yeah, oh, oh, I felt sad. It, like, it kind of just like started, but I really liked that how it had like that opening, and then right after you captured, it had like the Marvel Studios. I thought that was pretty epic. Yeah, because usually they start off with the Marvel logo, but this time it, it, the movie just started off with Earth 1988. It shows that whole set opening, then it shows the Marvel logo, then it cuts to Peter Quill being older now. So. I thought that was pretty clever how Marvel just started the movie like that. And I do have to agree with you guys. I thought it was a very sad opening. I actually had two tears coming out of me. No shame in that at all. What did I think of the opening? I want to say uppish. No, but no. But then again, I was going to make a joke, but it's not funny to make fun of someone who has cancer. Um, him as a boy, you know, we understand who he is. He's, he's very preoccupied. And seeing his mom die of cancer, which is an idea was very way out of left field. I was like, whoa, really, Marvel? You're hitting me with all this e- the feelings right now? I'm like, oh, God. And him getting beamed up by aliens, I just, I just started searing. I kept thinking of, you know, uh, Klingons kicking him up. Duke, blah, 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 ich, duke, blah. I kept thinking Klingons were kicking his ass. But then, ah, Marvel credits, and then I was ready. But then we later on clicked to 26 years later, and we see a grown-up Peter, played by Chris Pratt, going on the planet of, what's the name? Of Krag, looking for a mysterious item called the Infinity Stone, which if you all know from your Marvel, um, you know, pre-Avengers, they are all the jewels that need that Thanos, Josh Brolin's character, needs to control the Infinity Gauntlet, a powerful weapon that controls the universe for evil. <laughs> <laughs> I, and I really, and I gotta say, I really love that opening scene. Like he's just all dancing around. You see the Guardians of the Galaxy title, and then he's just all dancing around and, and having those creatures all over him. <laughs> Did you guys think that was a silly little scene? I love him kicking the rats. That was funny. Kicking the little aliens. That was cute. <laughs> I was when I was watching that opening scene, I was just thinking about Indiana Jones for a second. <laughs> <laughs> and we all know the most famous part of the beginning. Who are you? Who? Who? The Warlord, man. You know, legendary outlaw? Get him. Famous. I'm a famous bounty hunter. <laughs> but I do what love you think of that um, silly opening credits, Adam, with Chris Pratt just dancing and having those things in his mouth while near his mouth. Got me very ready for the movie. Got me very excited for the rest of it. I'll just awesome. say I was dancing. I was dancing in the seats, you guys. I'm sorry. I was going like John. Yeah. Yeah. I was. Hey, 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 dancing queen. What the fuck? I was laughing when he grabbed one of them and pretended. Hey, hey, hey. 
I do like how he uses the, the power suit he has, the space suit with the mask and the guns and the rocket boost. That was kind of cool. And it is from the comics, so that was pretty yeah, cool. The, to mask, see. the mask that he wears looks really cool on him. And the rocket boots, he can skate along space, which is pretty awesome. Ronan the Accusers are a villain played by Lee Pace. But who does he follow? Thanos, that Mad Titan, played by Josh Brolin of Old Boy. Oh, and speaking of Thanos, um, what would you guys think of Thanos' brief two-minute screen time? It was very cool. I forgot to mention in the review, but uh, I thought Josh Brolin did a really good job as Thanos. What about you, Brian? Oh, really? Uh... My brother said he looks like Link in that chair for some reason. <laughs> 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 and then I, you, uh, uh, Jacob, did you think Josh Brolin did pretty good as Thanos? He did fill the role. His voice was mighty and powerful like the galaxy itself. And he is in the chair because the guy's overweight. Yeah, true. The guy has so much muscle in his costume, he, he barely gets off his chair, really. But that's because he's a powerful being. And then we see that Ronan the Accuser, even though I think he's a little bit better than Malekith, sorry to piss off people who love Thor the Dark World, I love it too, we see that he also wants the Infinity Stone so he can wipe out Xandar. He made a deal with Thanos that if they wiped out Xandar, he'd still serve him in the galaxy. But if he failed, what did Thanos say? I will scour the blood with the celestial bodies with your body. That means he'll disown his ass. So, yeah. Oh, plus we also get introduced to Gamora, played by Zoya Saldana, and her sister Nebula, a cybernetic alien who's actually the daughter, along with her, of Thanos. Da, da, da. Now I want to hear from everyone. Who was your favorite character out of this whole movie? It's really a tie between Rocket Raccoon and Groot, honestly. I think they were both really awesome characters. Like you said in your review, Groot was very adorable, and <laughs> Rocket Raccoon was badass. Like right. that thing where he's just swinging those guys back and forth, and then he just comes uh, yeah. smiles. <laughs> yeah, what about you, Brian? Uh, who's your favorite character? Star Lord. He kind of reminds me of Ben Han Solo, I guess. I could see uh, what you mean by that. You already told me what about you, Jacob? Your favorite character in the film? I'm Groot. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was just making a joke. Yeah. But my favorite would have to be Rocket. I'm sorry, but. The way he's represented this movie was perfect. Is that yeah. condescending, loudmouth, jackass, badass motherfucker with a weapon. You don't want to mess with this guy. He's kind of like Malcolm or Jane from Firefly. If you're near this little rascal, he will fuck you up. He builds bombs and shit. So he's like, he's all that tough bad guyness in a furry furball. He will fuck you up. Yeah, my favorite, my favorite character in the whole movie is Rocket. He, he's just really badass, and I like that one scene where they're in the prison. He gets his gun ready. He's like, oh, yeah. And he's all black and shit and screaming. That was awesome. When that whole scene was happening, I was just getting all like, yes, yes. What's some of your favorite moments from the film? Ah, oh, jeez. Let's start with Adam. Adam, your choice. I love that scene when he was walking down. That music was playing. I love that scene when Groot was pushing him around and then smiles. Uh, I also really loved... The ending when Groot like grew bigger and then wrapped around all of them and says we are Groot. I thought that added a lot of depth to the film. That one gave me the feels. Oh yeah, that was. It gave me the feels, but not like when. I'm oh, sorry, Brian. Your very moments from God into the galaxy. The prison escape was really awesome. Like watching that scene in that IMAX screen was just really cool. It looked like Rocky Raccoon was like in front of my face with his glass. Like this. uh. I like the space battle at the end, where they, uh, I don't remember right, uh, I think they were battling Ronan's ship. Ronan and the Dark Aster. The Dark Aster was the name of the ship. And also, the part that made me laugh so hard in the movie is where the collector gets a bit excited when he sees the, the gem. And that kind of reminds me when I get something, like my blue or whatever. <laughs> yeah, that... That scene with the collector was just really random. What so, about you, uh, Jacob? Some of your favorite moments from the film? There's too many to count. I mean, sorry, I love this movie. I uh, love, um, what was it called? The fight scene with Gamora with this chase. But he puts <laughs> him in a bag. What the hell? He puts him in a bag. 
the fight scene with Ronan, just like the final battle. What are you? You were right, bitch. We're the Guardians of the Galaxy. That was this epic badassery. Plus, the space scenes were pretty good with Nova Prime. And everything. I loved every scene about this movie. It was just done flawlessly. I have some fair moments. I just said it right now. Rocky Raccoon just shooting everyone in the prison scene. That was really <laughs> hilarious. Um, the part where they met the collector, played by Benicio Del Toro. This is one of the more cute moments, but I actually did find it cute when... Um, you know, Star-Lord was showing Gamora his music that he grew up with. That was really cute to me and pretty heartfelt to me. I really loved that moment. And, of Help course, I love the finale with the battle sequences. That was really cool, too, especially when Gamora's fighting her sister Nebula. That was neat to see. So, yeah, there were a lot of moments in this movie that I had a lot of fun with. I know who you are, Peter Quill. Be wearing of your pelvic sorcery. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> Comic sorcery. Oh, Disney. <laughs> Man, Sex. You know, you know, after I watched Guardians of the Black Footloose now, remember when they mentioned that? Yes. <laughs> I didn't watch that movie. <laughs> Were there any flaws you guys had with the film? Anything the film could have done a little better job at? It has to be the villain. I didn't really like the villain too much of the movie. I felt like... I agree with uh, the critic Chris Duckman on YouTube on how he should have been funny like the rest of them. Because to me, like all the other characters were funny when he was just... He was, he was getting a little serious? Yeah, I wish he was... He, he just felt a little off in the movie because everyone else was funny. And then the villain, on the other hand, was just doing evil stuff for the most part and wasn't really doing anything that wasn't like... I'm just kidding. I wish the villain had a little was funny like the rest of them. You know what so, I mean? so you're saying is you'd rather have Loki as a villain in there than Ronan? Well, I still want him to be really evil. I just want him to have. I just wanted him to have a little bit of comedy relief in okay. there. Yeah, I, I can see where Adam's going with that. Ryan, I, I wish he, I wish he had some funny parts as the villain, like Loki did, but. Uh, he was an okay villain. What about you, Jacob? I know you said you loved the movie. I know it was like 5 out of 5 in your rating, but any little minor nitpicks you had with the film? Any I didn't tiny... mention this in my review, but I guess I can see why there'd be little comedy, but the guy in the comic is meant to be a ruthless motherfucker. That's the whole point. But then again, I would agree. He could have been like the genie. He could have... I'm not even comparing Disney characters here because it's Marvel. He could have been more funny. Like the evil dark villain in Howard the Duck. Sorry to bring that up, Jesus Christ. The evil <laughs> monster in Howard the Duck, who's played by James Jennings. God damn it. He could have been like Loki, like Tom Hiddleston. You know, he could have been sly, but a little funny. Even after the Hulk slammed his ass. Wait, why are we talking about the Avengers? We're talking about Guardians, damn it. But yeah, yeah. I would agree. He could have been a little funny, like a little ton of cheap, maybe. A little bit. But I see what Adam and Brian are going with. So that's the only mini nitpick. And also, I guess that this is also nitpick. Why wasn't Howard the Duck a little sneak peek earlier in the movie, a little bit, then also at the end? What the quack, man? My flaws, yeah, one of them is what Adam pointed out with Ronan. Not just Ronan, though, but Nebula. I felt like both Ronan and Nebula were kind of bland villains. They really weren't anything exciting to me, anything too special, so... In terms of villains, the film did disappoint me in terms of that. I thought Malekith from Thor The Dark World was a better villain than the villains here. Like, he wasn't the strongest, but at least I found him more interesting. So, yeah, the villains could have been more, more better. And like what Adam and Brian pointed out, they could have been more funnier instead of being a little too serious, a little too dark, because... This film was going for the comedy, but when the film cuts to them, it doesn't really. So I agree with you, t uh, with the, all of you on that one. And then the other fly I had was that while Dave Bautista did do decent as Drax, and I cared about the character Drax, I felt like Dave Bautista was just a little weak. Like it kind of felt like he was giving uh, giving the same face throughout the whole movie. Even when he gets all dramatic, it feels like his his face is just all still. He just wasn't as good as like the other actors in the Guardians of the Galaxy group, but that's really all I have for Floss, to be honest. 
So it's still a really awesome he, movie, though. You said he was flat. What do you say? Borderline flat? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like I said, he was just at least decent. So I guess we could talk about the after credit scene. So, Adam, okay. your thoughts? All right. It was very, the after credit scene, well, snap after credit scene, so obviously it was very quick, but I thought it was really funny. Even though I haven't seen Howard the Duck, I still knew who he was, obviously. Because they, uh, they they even put the name on the title, but I knew who he was anyways. Uh, I still thought it was, it still made me laugh. It was, it was really clever after credit scene they threw in there. Great little kind of cameo, I guess. Nice. Um, you, Brian, uh, oh, Brian, I know you didn't get to see it, so... But um, you you know about the after credit scene, right? Yeah. And then you, Jacob, your thoughts on that random Howard the Duck cameo? Okay, here's something for you guys. Howard the Duck was created in 1973. Groot was the first one of the Guardians created. That's all I gotta say. I hate the movie with a goddamn passion, but seeing him, voiced by Seth Green, Chris Griffin, was funny as shit. Just seeing Vince the total go like, what the fuck is that? Why is he looking? Why is he looking at you like that? I'm just saying, tourist. Yeah, I, I gotta say, um, even yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy first of all is definitely a standalone movie. Of course, doesn't really have doesn't really have anything to tie with the Avengers: Age of Ultron. I keep I keep hearing from people it's more of a tie in to the Avengers three. So I guess we'll see how that goes. But mm -hmm. in terms of the after credit scene, it was really funny. It was funny to see just the collector wake up, and then you see some dog lick him in the face. And then out of nowhere, you just see Howard the Duck, and it kind of gives you that big old what the F moment. The but it was very funny. It was very random. And, you know, it was, it was something funny to add. Adam, what do you rate Guardians of the Galaxy? A four and a half out of five. Nice. Just that one film. That's the only thing uh, I didn't. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Brian? What do you rate Guardians of the Galaxy? I would give it an A minus. I couldn't get to the plus because of that villain. But yeah. 4.5. I still had fun with it. It's an awesome movie. So 4.5 and an A minus? Yeah. That's how I score it. Is. Right. And then J5, I already know your rating because you reviewed it on your channel, but what's your rating on it, anyways? Okay, oh, well, the phone tells you five out of five. Correct. Bye. Okay. Um, if I had to do the five out of five thing, I would say four out of five. But on my rating, from my movie review, I gave it three and a half out of four stars. While it, it is not my favorite Phase 2 movie, it's still a freaking awesome movie and a film I'll definitely check out again and theaters, and I'll definitely buy right away on DVD. Comment below your favorite moments from Guardians of the Galaxy. Go ahead and spoil away since this is a spoiler review. And also, please check out Mark Krawcheck's The Spoiler Room, where I got to be on his channel to discuss and spoil Guardians of the Galaxy with a bunch of other amazing people. I will leave a link in the description below. I want to thank Adam Haskell, Brian Mendoza, and J53518 for Thank guest starring you. and the spoiler review yeah. for Guardians of the Galaxy. And as always, I'm J5 signing off. See you on the other side.